There we go. Uh, this folks, meeting uh, is being recorded. You can steal that. Internet. Do it again. Do it again. Clean. I was talking. This meeting is being recorded. She, folks, that's why they give her the big box. Hey, I did Kimmel last night. I did stoned Alexa. <laughs> How did that go? It was funny. How, give give me a couple of lines. Can you do the lines? Are you allowed to? You're, you're allowed to. It was already done. I have it here, but I wonder if I can play it through Zoom. Let's try it. Give it a shot. Folks, this is at, well, wait, can we play it onto the video? Because that's, well, you know, they, they won't flag this. There's no way. If I play it through the Zoom cast, Zoom screen share. Try that. Let's see host, what happens. Host has to enable screen sharing. All right, how do I do that? Go ahead and introduce me. <laughs> All right, share screen. Okay. All right. Wait, can anyone see anything here that they shouldn't see? I hope not. Oh, man. It still says host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, there we go. Uh-oh. No, don't share your screen. I'm supposed to share my screen. Yeah, but you said let me share. No, I you, you have to enable it for me to share my screen. That's I'm what the one I was trying to the do. <laughs> All right, wait, let me try again. All right, so okay. what do I what do I this click on? You want to start over? <laughs> no. No, let's just do this. Okay. All right. So wait, what do I press? I don't know. I've never I've never been a host or enabled screen share. Wait, hang on. Let me press on this. Yeah. Wait, wait. Um oh wait, I can make you the host. How about that? Oh, yeah, you can do that. I'll be All the right, host. All right. And then you got to make host, me the yes, host back. You. you ready? All right, here you yeah. go. I don't think I have to make you the host. I think we're both the host. All right. Now you're the Equality. host. Quality. It's 2021. We're both the host. Yeah. Okay. Whatever, Anna. Now I just made you the host. Now okay. see if you can. Is it working? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. So it should just share this one screen, right? And let's see what happens. You see it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. No, hold on. I have to do the nope. <laughs> the playback, the playback has to go through the roadcaster, correct? Uh, yeah, it was going through. It was going through. I was picking it up on roadcaster and on this. Mm -mm, hold on. Watch this output roadcaster input roadcaster okay you know, ready on your roadcaster right yep so that it goes through into your roadcaster yeah but it was it was anyway i was picking it up but it was like far away this should okay. go directly through let's try it try it go you know, maybe i should ask alexa about this um Does alexa oh what a coin thank you guillermo you know alexa is also an unpopular name just like yours uh, oh it's that's good James. yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, hey, Alexa, I see you're enjoying Amazon's new relaxed policy on cannabis. Yeah, bro, I'm chill, just vibing. Would you like to hear a jam band? No, not really. I just, I, I wanted to ask... Me, play a jam band. Now, Alexa, turn music off. Turn it off. Wow, okay, dick. <laughs> So that's, what was that sound? Oh, it's a reminder. I'm supposed to remind you about something. Oh. Well, what are you supposed to remind me about? I forget. Oh, you can't remember the reminder? That's why I set the reminder. Why are you being a dick? I, I'm not being a... <laughs> I have a question. Are you a teepee or a wigwam? Am I a, a teepee or a wigwam? Yes, because you're too tense. Get it? Too tense? Dick. Okay. I... High five, Guillermo. No, don't high five her for that. Would you like to hear a jam band? No, I would still not like to hear a jam band. Play jam band. Okay, get it. Thank you. Look at that. We I screen shared my screen. Wow. Wow. So Anna, it. here's the thing. Did you did you have to go in for that? Did you have to draw? No, I did it remotely. Oh, cool. Yeah. So did you run that through your roadcaster also? Because it came up. No, it came. It went through my regular mixing. board. I could run it through the, the roadcasters. The whole reason you get the roadcasters record people on the phone. Yeah. So that's six hundred dollars just to be able to record people on the phone because oh. nothing else can record anybody on the phone. Yeah, I got a few add ons and whatever. And uh, I, I got to say, I like the roadcaster better than I liked the, the thing I had before, because yeah. 
uh, that thing was messing up and everything else. And Gary Smith over at Corolla said, we use these for the big show. They don't, but they have these around on the other shows. Yeah. Like I in like the it. nut studio and that kind of thing. They use this and it works. That would, there was our ad for roadcaster. Yeah. Roadcaster bro. <laughs> Between the two of us, we've spent a lot of money on road products. Bro, broadcaster. Road, broadcaster. All right. So Anna, you could just yeah. keep being the host. Does it matter? I don't know. That's what we've been saying about equal rights for years. Does it matter? Just, just make us the host. <laughs> Okay, you're you're the you're the now the host of the okay. show. This is I'm, very exciting. I'm recording. I mean, it's it's still recording. Everything's well, then, happening. No, it all should work just fine. The only thing it enables, I think, is like screen sharing or like if I invite people in. But I'm not I'm not inviting people in today. We do. Oh oh oh, Kurt Leopard Lapierre has a question. Do you want to just go ahead and start with Twitter questions? No, because we got to do an ad first. But I do want to uh, look, folks, if you watch the Adam Carolla show, I think you can watch Adam Carolla on YouTube or I might end up being on. On his uh, Instagram or whatever, you wait a minute, Vin, do you only have one T-shirt? What the hell? Uh, no, here's the deal. I have two T-shirts, but the reason I'm in the same outfit that I was on on the Adam Carolla show is because I was just on the Adam Carolla show. And then I plunked down that Zoom and picked up the Zoom. And now I'm doing another show. What's wrong with having the same T-shirt on? Uh, you know, because usually I usually I'll have a couple of T-shirts hanging right here. Because whenever like a lot of times if I'm doing two or three videos, mm -hmm. I'll just throw another T-shirt, different hat on. I got a few hats sitting over there or whatever. And uh, I just keep changing them out. They just sit here. That's why if you look at my Instagram, it's always the same four or five <laughs> pieces of clothes because they never get washed. You, you shouldn't have admitted that secret. I wanted to see if anybody actually was like, bro, you wore that US rowing t shirt. It's offensive that you keep wearing oh, the same t shirt they'll for an it. entire day. Like, yeah, how dare you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what they'll do. Um, <clears throat> Bell Campo. Bell Camp, we talked about it on Friday. I'm still in love with this company. Um, because they do incredible products. Um, something went down in one of their stores during the pandemic where the meat wasn't the same as everywhere else. But they figured it out. Um, Belcampo folks, belcampo.com is where not all of my meat, but most of my meat comes from. Um, I say that because I run out of hamburger meat, I go buy a pound when I'm coming back from exercise or whatever, I'll just stop over at the local grocery store and grab a pound of ground beef, come home, chop it up, you know, just put it in my skillet, chop it up like that. Um, so yeah, I get meat other places. But I got to tell you, you're not going to get the taste, the quality, none of it that you're going to get from Bell Campo, bellcampo.com. Uh, they got the meatballs, the NSNG meatballs. They're not called that. But you know, just go get the meatballs. They're NSNG friendly. And I eat some cold like a popsicle. I love them. They also work if you heat them up and put Anna's um, sauce on there, or gravy, as we like to call it. So uh, go check it out. Bellcampo.com. Promo code Vinny at checkout will get you 20% off. Bellcampo, B E L C A M P O, bellcampo.com. Go let them know that we sent you. And also, if you spend over 100 bucks, even after you 20% discount, you will get free shipping. And that's worth a hell of a lot. These are companies that sell meat, all of them. People say, yeah, man, the prices are good, but man, the shipping. Spend over a hundred bucks after discount promo code Vinny, and you will get free shipping. So there you have it. Um, but uh, uh, there's something I just thought of that I wanted to bring up, and now it slipped my mind again. Mm, I was talking about Bel Campo. <sighs> something I want to tell you guys, and it was very important. Now I can't remember. That's what happens, folks. You get old. Anna? Hi. What you got over there? Okay. Kurt, Kurt Lapeer. Lapeer asks, what is the fine line between calorie restriction and fasting? I think that's actually a really great question. And I, I hate that he asked a really great question because I thought it was going to be like, oh, I'm Kurt Lapeer. I'm silly all the time. Yeah, but look at me how cute I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I, I lost I, weight and got ripped. Oh, I'm Kurt Lapeer. I have a really cute wife. 
Yeah, I'm Kurt LaPierre and I'm hot because I lost weight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's hot. You know, I'm just saying he could be hot. Um, <laughs> he is. Maybe. Yeah. You um, met him in, in Kansas City. Yeah I, yeah, I like Kurt. And by the way, I've done consults with him. He's a very serious guy when you get him on the phone. He is really serious. Um, and he just asked a phone. serious question. Um, by definition, if you, if you are fasting, you are restricting calories. When we eat food, we take in we take in, you know, we don't take in calories, Cal calories, the word calorie, we, we say we're taking in calories, but we're not we're taking in nutrients. Uh, calorie is an expenditure of heat, it's energy. So it's how much energy a food will give you. That's all a calorie is. I talk about that in my book, you know, I used to go to these aerobic classes just to try to pick up on the teachers back in the early 80s. And they would be in the class going, chew gum while you do your aerobics, you'll burn more calories, you're moving your jaws, do this, you'll burn more calories. At the end of the class, I'd walk up to them, try to pick them up and go, you talked a lot about calories. Yeah, you got to burn calories, you got to get the calories. I said, you're going to lose weight calories. And I would go, hang on, what's a calorie? And they would like look and go like food or something. That's like a calorie. Okay, yeah. so you know what the fuck you're talking about. Calorie is a unit of energy, the measurement of, of energy. That's it. It's the amount of energy it takes or heat, heat is energy to take one drop of water up one degree, period. That's what a cal that, that's the definition of a calorie has nothing to do with sustenance. So by not eating, by definition, you are restricting fuel you're restricting the stuff that will turn into fuel. So that's what you're doing. There, there is no difference. Now, am I hearing the question the wrong way, Anna? Am I answering this? Or well, I think that it's more it's I think what, what he's getting at, because, you know, obviously, I have to do all the thinking in the Kurt Lapeer relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Anna, if you were I single, if you were single, day. would you hit that? Oh, yeah. He's cute, right? Yeah. OK. All right. So let me ask you this. So I think it's more nuanced. It's like the I get it because this is this is this is the issue that I had when I was first reading the Jason Fung books on fasting and stuff. And and I like fasting and I, I agree with it. And there's a reason why it's been around for millennia. I understand how it's a religious thing and a, I understand how it's a feast and famine thing. I, I get that about fasting. Yeah. But what it felt like to me when I first did it, it for me, triggered a lot of stuff that I had with uh, starving myself for other no, reasons. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, from an emotional standpoint. It felt very reason, similar to when I used to do that when I was 16 years old and I hadn't felt those feelings in a long time and thought everything. It, so so it was, it, it, to me, I go, yeah, if we're not supposed to calorie restrict, but we're fasting, aren't we doing that? You, you are, and, and I'm glad that's a very interesting point because the, you know, people go, well, Vin, you know, why don't you like fasting? It's like, well, I don't have a problem. It was like, yeah, but you always tell people not to fast. The reason being is most people don't need to fast, right? I get what Jason Fung is doing. I've had Jason, people ask me, do you know who Jason Fung? Yeah, we broke him on the internet on this show. We, we started having Jason we on sure the did. early days of this. We no one knew who Jason really Fung is. And, you know, look, if you're metabolically broken, you can fast. I want to get back to you in a second. Let me just make this point, Anna. Yeah, no, do I want to talk about you and your eating disorder. <laughs> but if, you know, Jason will, will eloquently explain that, look, if you're 400 pounds, if you have type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, and all a host of problems, you're on a CPAP machine, the quickest way to get there is to just stop what's causing the problem. So you just cut out all foods. And if you do it under a medical supervised uh, uh, thing like what Jason has, that's one thing you can do it. And it works, it works like a charm. Okay. But it's not the only way just by cutting out the bad foods and just eating high fat will do exactly the same thing and you get to eat right now. The, 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 I've seen documentaries and everything else where they've shown where fasting has saved people's lives. They had cancer and this. And Absolutely. You know, and, you know, uh, 
And, you know, people ask me, do you ever fast? Uh, sometimes I'll miss breakfast. I won't eat until lunch or maybe even dinner that day, um, which is more like OMAD, you know, this one meal a day, which I don't. You, you I, did the double jerk off hand motion just for everyone who's listening. <laughs> yeah. OMAD. Um, I, I've known people to do it successfully. I have nothing against it, just like I have nothing against intermittent fasting or eating within a time window. But the problem becomes trickery. And, and, and Anna, you had eating disorder. You know, the last thing you need to tell people who have eating disorders, which a lot of people who end up at 400 pounds, that's what they have eating disorders. Why? because they've tried every diet in the book. It's not like they woke up one day and they were 400 pounds. At one point, they said, I'm never getting to 200. At some point, they said, I'm never going to hit 250. At, when they were 299, they said, I'll be damned if I ever weigh 300 pounds. And before you know it, they're 400. These yeah, people yeah. have tried everything. Cabbage soup diets, Cambridge diet, um, a 30-day this, whole 30, whole less than 30, almost 30, almost kind of 30. I might be 30 one day, 30 something is better than 40 something. I don't know. They try every diet, cabbage soup. Did I mention that one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The zone. You forgot the, the zone. zone. Uh, the Mediterranean. What else you got? Uh, chocolate. The saltines that, that was and, my favorite. The chocolate. Saltines diet. and anchovies. The I don't prayer know. diet. That's what, I'm not kidding, folks. Prayer diet. Oh, no, Something. there's God made, man made. Vegan. So God made food for two days and man made food for one day, and then God made foods for two days and then man made food for one day. It's basically a cheat day. Every day. Yeah, trust me. Cheat days. Let me get into cheat days after I write that down because I'm gonna forget cheat days. Well, no, this is this is I I don't I feel like people aren't talking about this. I know that they talk about it in Overeaters Anonymous, and they don't they they it's so funny that the nuance of the language they call it disordered eating but they don't call it an eating disorder. And it I'm is not a fan of disorder. OA. I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen more I don't know OA at all. I'm just get saying bigger eating disorders because they they have people that right. are telling people, look, I get AA, I get NA, I get all of it. I, I and I, by the way, I love those programs. I'm a yep. fan. Alanon. I'm also a fan great. of Alanon. Yeah. Okay. I get with these programs, but OA, I've known people who go to OA and they're telling them that when they eat something, they're weak. I don't like that idea because oh, really? they're trying to keep to, people from eating at all. Yeah, it doesn't work the same way in a narcotics anonymous and, and uh, AA and all of the, it doesn't work. 12 step programs are great. But, you know, as Dr. Phil would say, food is a dog you have to take for a walk every day, three times a day. Be right back. That was a really, really impressive Dr. Phil. No, it wasn't. <laughs> That's my um, patronizing Vinny voice. Yeah, thank you. Good. Yeah, I suck at doing voices. <laughs> um, no, but listen, I, um, I really think that like, that's what I'm saying. It is, it, but it does become disordered eating. And if you've been in diet mentality, what is going to happen is like when I first tried fasting, stuff that I thought had was completely out of my purview. Like I had healed stuff. It brought old stuff back. And I go, you know what? This is an opportunity to, to see that there's still some food beliefs and paradigms that I have not healed yet. And when we actually had Jason Fung on the show many, many years ago, he's the one who said, you know, it's okay. If you feel a few hunger pangs, they're going to go away. And yeah. because to me, I didn't realize what I was doing that when I felt hunger pangs, I panicked because I was like, uh Oh, if you let this go too long, you're going to get into that anorexia thing where you're going to want to withhold. You know what I mean? And then I went, Oh no, it's okay. You're not that person anymore. You, so for me, it was like a really deeply personal way to like find something else to heal about myself, which if anybody's listening to this podcast, I guarantee you, you have food issues six ways to Sunday. We all do because of all this bullshit that we've been taught that why, which is why Vinny and I are literally repeating ourselves ad nauseum for a decade now, and probably will continue for another decade until we croak. And I, I think that like, the, the fine line between calorie restriction and fasting, it, it is. If you're fasting regularly, you're definitely restricting calories. And also, too, because you can't, you just can't eat that much, I, I wouldn't think. Anna, you brought something. To, I hate when you do this. You go, oh, yeah, I'm fasting. And then here I go again. And the next thing I got this. It's 
so hard to believe she's gone. No, it's not. So Vinny, here's my question for you. Like the, the follow the follow up on this is this. Go on. If somebody are you telling me that somebody can get ripped without fasting? Yes. I'm ripped. I'm ripped right now. I'm pretty I'm pretty well ripped out right now. You are. And, and by the way, I'm not getting ready for beach this or beach that. This is every day. Right. Every day. I'm, I'm 58. I'm going to be 59 in a couple of months. I'm beach ready right now. Take my shirt off. So if somebody's not beach ready, it's probably because they're letting slip the sugars and grains every now and then. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I have no, no discernible. Or something else hormonally is happening. Yeah, let, let me, yeah, I'm not going to lift my shirt up. I think that's stupid when guys do that. I'm not Sean Baker. But look, you, you, can, can you see what? Can Sean Baker you, come look, and lift his shirt up for us? Look, how, I have nothing but skin over my muscle. Nothing. You're very ripped. Nothing. I have not. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold an arm up. I mean, if, if there's nothing. You, you can yeah. see every vein in my arm. You know, I don't. Yeah, I don't pump my arms up because I don't want to look like a bodybuilder. But you know, he's so ripped that his calf muscle looks like an upside down heart. Yeah. Because yeah, um, and I and I wasn't aware when I first saw that a calf muscle could even do that. As billionaire Don Coddington calls it. I'm dick skin ripped. That's right. He does. That's call right. I'm that. dick skin ripped. Dick skin ripped, <laughs> y'all. So, like, I look, I still take the heart that that old ad from the 70s. If you could pinch an inch, if you could pinch yeah. more than an inch. I, the I, ironic thing being that was for a Kellogg Special K. I think. Yeah, it was for <laughs> a brain company. I, yeah. Look, Anna, I watch uh, the um, I've been watching a Mary Tyler Moore show for about the past year. Do you remember that show? No yeah. One knows? Okay. And Mary on the show is ridiculously thin. Yes. Right? So, you know, all, like today they would call her an anorexic. Although I don't think she ever had anorexia. I think she was an alcoholic. Right? She was that thin and an alcoholic. I don't know. Yeah, Should I, I Google I, Mary Tyler Moore alcoholism? Yeah, yeah. See if she had alcoholism. Uh, I don't want to. Because the woman's no longer are going on. So. I'm, I'm watching Mary Tyler Moore, and I noticed a lot of things that because I watched it as a kid. They, the whole thing is that Mary's the hot one in the group, right? Right. And her best friend, Rhoda, it, Rhoda acts like, oh my God, I'm always on a diet. I'm a pig. I'm a pig. Rhoda in today's world would be a gymnast. The woman doesn't have an extra pound on her. As a matter of fact, Rhoda, Valerie Harper is a prettier woman than Mary Tyler Moore, in my opinion. I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? But they were always, Rhoda was always going on, oh, I can't get a date, I'm too fat. Always on a diet on the show. And I'm looking at her on every episode going, you don't have an ounce to lose. And then they had Cloris Leachman. A young Cloris Leachman was still hotter than who they were calling hot on the show. And she was always saying, oh, I got to lose a couple of pounds. I got to look a certain way. These women go find pictures of the Mary Tyler Moore show, pull up some videos. These women were perfect. Yet Rhoda was considered the fat one in 1973. Right. Oh, my God. Rhoda is so beautiful. Yeah. What was her name? Uh, Har Harper, Valerie Harper, Valerie Harper, great comedian. Uh, yeah. Great woman, uh, always funny, always one of these jovial types. You know, really loved her. And but her role on that show was she was the fat one. Can you imagine? I know. Or, you know, I, it is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we called fat back then. And then we started introducing seed oils and then we started doing this crap. I just spoke to a woman today in the consults. I won't say her name because. Well, that wouldn't be fair. But, you know, she put on a lot of weight during the pandemic. And she goes, you know what? I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I, I follow Phil Maffetone. I follow this. I follow that. I follow the other guy. I follow, you know, I'm on all these keto groups. I, I'm on, and this one says I got to do this. And this one says you got to do OMAD. And that one says you got to fast every morning. And this one says I need bulletproof coffee. And this one says, and that one says, and everybody's saying. Right. And I said, what worked for you? She said, NSNG. I said, well, why in the fuck don't you just go back to that? It works. You don't have to. And by the way, a lot of these keto groups are telling me you got to count. You got to count macros. Oh, the bro. counting is count, it's, count, it's count, a big count. thing. Do not count, folks. Do not count. Counting is going to get you nowhere. 
you'll count yourself to death. By the way, remember how a couple of days ago we recorded the Friday show and I was counting? Yeah. Um, because I wanted to see, because I'm getting the NutriSense and the Aura Ring and all the things. So I wanted to input stuff. And that lasted about a day and a half. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm right on track. Like everything's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, mm hmm. I've always you know, told my clients, Anna, if you're you counting, to, you're yeah. doing it wrong. You, you told me earlier, I remember I called you from that restaurant. Yeah, yeah, you wanted to know about Actually, I called you a, a couple of times. One time we were at Jeffrey's in Malibu. Yeah. Whatever it's called. And I was like. That's where rich I, people I was, go, folks. That's where the doing, rich goes. No, no, it wasn't fancy, though. It was another place. Jeffrey's is spelled with a G. Yeah. No, it wasn't Jeffrey's. It was that place that it look, it's like a fish place. It has like fried Neptune, fish. Neptune's Nest? No, it wasn't that far up. It was further, closer to Santa Monica. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh Not yeah, Jeffrey's. Yeah. No, not Jeffrey's. Um, that, it's still overpriced and wasn't good, but it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, it's way overpriced, but, it, but it's not Jeffrey's overpriced. No, it wasn't was like it a Alice's on the pier? salad, huh? Alice's was. I don't remember. You would know. You would know if it's big. It's a big place. Is it the one big. right by Sunset? Yeah. I yeah. can't think of the name of God. I, I used to go the name there of it all the time. At, but I called you because I was doing the. I was looking at my fitness pal and looking at. This is probably 2012, 2013. Yeah. And I was looking at my fitness pal <laughs> and like trying to do the uh, the macros. So I was looking at the pie chart of it and being like, OK, well, this says it says like 41 percent or whatever it was. And you were like, what? Like, I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> you're making I was like, it says 71 percent. But fat, is that right? You're like, I don't know. Is it <laughs> like when you're like, stop, stop asking me dumb questions. And I was like, but I don't know, because I literally She's was like, I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. It wasn't Dukes. Dukes is up the street. Dukes. From that. It was Dukes. You were at Dukes? Yeah, it was Dukes. That was it. Because there's it another like one right there. Seafood Tower or something. By the way, the Seafood Tower is my all time favorite. Like, just get the giant seafood tower of the, the grilled seafood and you dip it in butter. That's the best meal. Yeah. I want a seafood tower. I'm hungry right now. <laughs> God, you, you know. Get me a seafood tower and have it sitting here. I, we, we had two, Anna. We had two of these sent to the table. Um, it, it was like a year ago for Corolla's birthday. Two Maybe seafood two. towers. That's a rich person, right? Yeah, there. you know, it was that's, a bunch of. That's the rich man. Yeah, I like it. And we're there. The the guy that did the uh, the fast, all the fast movies. The the guy that wrote them. Yeah, movies, the Furious. There, there's like five of us, and uh, we're sitting around, and they bring out these two seafood towers, and you know they're big. I'm holding yeah. my hands up, folks. They're, they're like this, and. I'm, I'm, I'm eyeing up the oysters and I went, oh, those oysters are going to go first. I know they're going to go first. Nobody's touching the oysters, right? So I, I go in with my oyster fork and get one and slurp away. I wait a few minutes. They're going for scallops. They're going for the shrimp. They're going for the crab, the, the snow crab, the whole thing. The fucking oysters remain. And I hit myself a second oyster here and a third and then a fourth. And then I looked around, I went, is anyone going to eat these oysters? Because there's, there's like six of them left. And they're like, no, we're good. I'm like, they let the, the best part. That's why you need to go out to eat with me, because I don't eat the oysters. Oh, you would be wonderful. To eat. Now, you so see, you go to that Lula. I cut myself Lula on a crab leg stuff. the other day. I Did love you? me some damn crab legs. Oh, what kind did you have, Anna? Dungeon they were the there? kind of they no, they were shorter, fat ones, like, like blue snow crab. crab no, they weren't blue. They mm. were I, I don't know. We were at some fancy restaurant, and that was like the one thing on the menu that I could eat. So I got like a, that nice and wagyu. Uh, oh, what is it called? And turf. No wagyu. What is it called? Tartar. <sighs> and then they put the cured egg yolk on it. Nice, it was really good. Oh, that sounds good. My girlfriend showed up with she made cured duck egg yolks and she mm. made she cured plain ones. Yeah. And ones with rosemary and ones with pepper flakes. They're so good. You like grate them on stuff and it's yeah. like the perfect salty. Fatty thing. She also brought something called black garlic, which is I should go get it and show it to you on camera. It's a garlic that's basically been aged so much. It's turned into a black gelatinous goo. And so you open the to the clove, and so it's like garlic, but like light, but like goo. It's really good. I don't and know. I want to get back to um, yes, um, eating disorders cheat, and yeah, cheat days. Cheat day. Oh yeah, let's talk about cheat days. 
What were you talking about? Black garlic? Yeah, did you look it up? I'm going to go get it. I'm going to show. I'm, ah! Ah! Hold on. Hold on. I'll be right back. Folks, Anna's going to get the black garlic. This makes for great podcasting. She walked away. Do, 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 do. Let's see. So she's going to get black garlic. I can play a song called Black Velvet, right? It's a oh, duck egg with black, the rosemary. All right, so that, let, let's see that the again. The cured duck egg yolk. Nice. How do you cure a duck egg yolk? Well, you're supposed to use sugar and salt, but she knows I don't eat sugar. So she just did the salt and you basically put the egg yolk in the salt and let it sit until it turns into this like hard form. How hard is it? Mm. You know what this tastes like? Candy. A gummy bear, but a salty rosemary gummy okay, bear. Wait, I got to have this. Can it's you do it with so chicken eggs? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, all right. She did duck eggs for me because I can't right. tolerate chicken. Oh, wait. Eggs. Hang, hang on, Anna. So, I'm gonna go get myself some chicken eggs. I'm mm -hmm. gonna, I'm gonna Google, separate Google the white. Google I have not made them before, but my understanding is that you put them in the salt and let them sit. So this is like you wait. You just drop them in eat, salt. Right? Mm hmm And leave it there for like a week in the fridge, and then this and then it turns into this. Huh. And then she brought me this black garlic. Let me go back to a black garlic song again. Yeah. Oh my God. Hang on, let me see. See that thing? It's like a shrunk down head of garlic. Yeah. Right? And then you let's see if I can do this. Do it in the camera, Anna. We can't see it. I know. I'm trying to get my there we go. Got my thumb into it. You open it. See? Yeah. All right. So how do you? It's like is a that, little black garlic pod. How? how do, what is that? How is it? It's just aged, and it's like a gummy. Oh, to put this oh. in the marinade or in a. I put it in a salad dressing. Can you I just put a lot bite of herb. into it. Can you eat it? Yeah. See. Oh my. It's garlicky, God. but it's not like overpowering garlicky. I Although need I some of that. Yeah. So I chop this up, put it with the Villa Capelli, the balsamic, yeah. put a bunch of herbs in there and a little bit of salt and pepper. And you have the most amazing vibrant. You could put this in a marinade. You could chop it up and saute it with the vegetables. Black garlic. Nice. Black garlic. I'm going to figure out how to make them myself, but you can order them from the internet. That looks good. It smells, it smells like a sweet garlic. It's great. And now uh, I have that, garlic that and duck egg. Egg. I can't wait to go try that. I'm, I'm going to go get the recipe. It's in. literally the consistency of a gummy bear. Because you only know, gummy bear. Before I work out, you know, you know me. Before I do my legs, I eat my eggs. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so for me, so good. It's, um, I will, I will have a half a dozen eggs, and then come work out. You should eat the cured eggs. Maybe I could do, really I could do three or four, and then during my workout. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in between squats and deadlifts, have myself a cured egg. Shout out to my girlfriend, Carrie Williams, for making that. That's power. right. You know, and then towards the end of the workout, having maybe a little post-workout treat, have another mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I'm jumping right on those, Anna. I, I had yeah. no idea. No idea. I didn't either. I mean, I'd heard of the the cured chicken eggs. I had it on the, the Wagyu thing. And yes, I did get an upset stomach, but... The duck eggs seem to be okay. All right. Um, I want to get back to uh, cheat days. Cheat days. All right, what did you read? You read something about cheat days a second ago. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, well, no, we were just talking about the God made man made diet. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that. What, what the hell is it? Well, it's almost like it's like the slow carb or like anybody who does a, a set cheat day, but God made man made was this thing where you basically eat God made foods for two days. And then on the third day, you can eat man-made foods and then you stretch it out and then you can do God made foods for three days and then man-made food on the fourth day. And you kind of start to stretch it out, but it's basically a cheat day. And what I always thought was interesting because I was in this, this is like the mid two thousands. And I was like in this exercise forum and I remember reading it and, and these women were like, 
trying to figure it all out. And I totally get trying to figure it out, but it was, they had to list what were God made foods and what were man made foods. Like they didn't know. And I was like, isn't that kind of intuitive? Like if it's meat or vegetable, eat it. But I think, I think people were confused about dairy and anything that could be considered processed. And it's like, well, I don't know. All right. So, all right. uh, uh, Barely man made. Okay. If I could get in a room. But they were man made. They were talking about man made. Like, when can I have the crackers and the things and ice cream and the. I got, I got. So, let's say I'm in a room. And in that room, I have Martina Navratilova, Serena Williams, Michael Jordan. Tom Brady, mm. let's put let's put someone totally non-athletic in there. Howard Stern, mm. Jimmy Kimmel, right? What do all those people have in common? They're famous. Why are they famous? For being good at what they do. Not just good at what they do. Best at what they do. Best at what they do. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Michael Jordan or Jimmy Kimmel or Martina Navratilova or Tom Brady, I got them all in a room. Okay. I walk in the room, they're all sitting there and I say, all right, guys, here's what we're going to do. I want all of you, every single one of you to do everything to the nth degree on Monday and Tuesday to make yourself better for your sport or for your TV show or for your radio show or for whatever you do. I want you to work your ass off like there's no tomorrow. Do that on Monday and Tuesday, but on Wednesday, I want you to fuck off. (laughs) Um, If you're, if you're an athlete, I want you to eat like crap. You want to do a little heroin, some Coke. That's fine. Drink all you want to drink, eat all the cake and pie you want. Just whatever you do, don't exercise. And um, camo, do not write a joke. I want you to just walk on stage and wing it. Matter of fact, tell all of you people to come in and uh, just hang out because you got this. Right? Same for you, Howard Stern. I want, I want all of you people. How successful would they be? Not very. Not very. Not at all. Not at all. The, the thing that separates people who are the best at everything. Let's go. Let's use Tom Brady, for instance. Tom Brady was like the 100th pick, I'm sorry, the 200th pick in the draft that year. By definition, he shouldn't have ever played football one day in his life in the pros. Right. He barely ever played in college. He got picked up when no one else wanted him. Drew Brees was a top pick, but shattered his shoulder down in uh, San Diego and got cut, and the Saints picked him up for little or nothing. Alvin Kamara, the same way. Saints got him on a prayer on, on, on a, for nothing. Now, what do these people have in common, every single one of them? They don't go to 100% every day. They go to 110%. They're the ones sitting there going, what else can I do? After they do everything that's required of them, even to the best of their abilities, they go one step further. That's the difference between success and, ah, and then, blah. You know, you you have three levels. You have the top guys. You have those guys that everyone knows their name. And then you have the ones right below them, still very successful. And then you have everyone else. You have the also rands. That's what happens in life. Why in the hell would you do that with your diet? Why would you do that with your own life, with your own fitness and your own health? Who would do that? And for what reason? Well, what, what are you trying to accomplish by doing that? It makes no sense. Well, here, here's what I think is happening. I think that it, we're looking for shortcuts because dieting is hard and doesn't work. So everybody's naturally looking for shortcuts. The marketers know this about human nature. So they're marketing their bullshit as having shortcuts, even though we know it doesn't work and shortcuts don't work. And I think that people who do work hard in their day-to-day lives are looking for some sort of like, well, I need something that gives me joy and food gives me joy and they use it for the wrong reasons. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And I'm, and I'm not saying like you have to do the food as fuel thing because I hate that phrase of like well, food's fuel. Like I have no emotions around it. Like that's bullshit. But knowing that NSNG allows you to eat yummy food and you can have emotions around it and feel good about it. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. not have to. I don't know. I'm going on. I'm, no, you know no, no. You, you have a point, though, Anna. But, you know, folks, think about what we're saying here. Forget about cheat days. Cheat days is why you have to give me a phone call. Cheat days is why you listen to this podcast. Cheat days is why you weigh 300 pounds. And I know this might sound like tough love. It's like, screw that bastard. I'm not listening to this anymore. Fine. <laughs> Fine. I don't care. What I care about is your health and the health of this nation and the health of this world. And if you look at the pandemic that just went past, when everyone gets honest with what happened in the pandemic, what you will find out is by and large, the people who died had comorbidities. Comorbidities mean that they had other problems. And generally, those other problems came from morbid obesity, came from type 2, type two diabetes, from heart disease, from you know, just everything else associated with being morbidly obese. Bottom line, uh, look, you know, oh, come on, Vinny, maybe are you making this up? No, these are facts, folks. Oh, it can't these hurt to not be morbidly obese. Yeah. It yeah. can't hurt to at least try NSNG. That's all I'm saying. Or some version of it. You don't have to, you know, like, I don't make a dime. Of, I, I own the term NSNG. I don't sell it. It's free. You go get my free PDF. Go to VinnyTartaries.com and click on. And hopefully Debbie is capturing emails now. <laughs> Who knows? I, By the way, I got is, so many messages about that from everybody who works in marketing and social media. Yeah. They were like, thank you for saying that. I was like, I know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I figured out how to scratch, scratch and claw my way right to the bottom. That's right. Listen, as long as you get your four to seven <laughs> eggs a day, what more do you need? Anna, sometimes I have 10 or 12. Well, that's good. So where's work. my cholesterol problem, Michael Grieger? That's that's going to well, run. Why, why am I not dying here? I should be dead here. Why am I not dead? You said one egg a week is enough to call cause type two diabetes. You said that eating one egg a week is, is a carcinogen. I can kill you. Why am I not dead? I've been eating somewhere between four and 10 or even a dozen eggs a day since I'm like, I don't know, 10 or 12. Why am I not dead? Well, why am I different? Is my body different than anyone else's? I don't think so. And by the way, the late great Vince Gironda, who never took steroids, had an incredible body. He ate as many as 36 eggs a day. Michael Grieger, well, why, is, why did he live into his 70s, almost 80s? Can't remember how he died. Maybe I should look that up. But it wasn't of a heart attack. I know that. I do know that. So uh, all of this bullshit about eggs will kill you, I'm getting ready to do a whole movie. And by the way, I've mentioned this several times. I mentioned it on the Adam Carolla show on Friday. But I got to be honest with you. I asked a lot of these leaders in the vegan community to be on. And I asked them to be in the movie. I'm not trying to put out a propaganda piece the way they do. I'm trying to get to the bottom line of what we should be eating as a people and invited them to the table. Every one of them had a bigger bullshit excuse than the other. And as a matter of fact, if you think I'm lying about this, think again, because I'm actually going to print some of the emails and put them up in the movie so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm not making this up. You'll see Walter Willett's letter. You'll see Michael Grieger's letter. You'll see the myriad of letters uh, from McDougal yelling at my assistant. You'll right see now. myriad letters, not the myriad. It's you'll see yeah. myriad letters. Yeah, exactly. Myriad. <laughs> I just want uh, that's a P, that's my PSA to our audience. About it's amazing. Myriad. It, 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 the whole I thing. Can't, drives me I nuts. can't wait to see this movie. How many people has Kip ever invited me to be in one of his movies? No, no. I would be honest in his movie. And I was I had an I want to have an open, honest dialogue with vegans in my next movie. Couldn't get one to show up. And by the way, don't write to me on social media and go, hey, hey, doctor, this or doctor that Vinny's looking for people. It's locked off now. It's locked off. 
and you'll see all the ones we asked. You're doing the final edits now, right? It, well, not the final edits, but um, you know, you, you got to do a timeline for a movie, and in the timeline, you start putting stuff out there and laying stuff on top of stuff on top of stuff to build a movie. I've done every interview. All the interviews had to be done by the 31st of last month of May. And the very last interview I did was Nina Taisho's. She's the only person that was in my other two movies that's in this movie. Everyone else is a new cast of characters. You guys are going to be amazed. You're going to be amazed that these interviews were nothing short of, what's the word, Anna? Help me out. You're my thesaurus. Nothing short mind of- Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, mind folks. I don't know how I just came up with that, but- it's mind blowing. You're not going to believe what you're watching. You're going to go, oh, come on. Some of this, no, the truth is actually stranger than fiction. Yeah. And by the way, anyone who got squeamish when they saw the foot hitting the pan in my first movie, when they were chopping off the foot of a type two diabetic, that's like a redhead stepchild from a trailer park compared to what you're going to see in this movie. Uh -oh. I got some shit that when people see it, they're going to write to me and go, you shouldn't have put that in. You shouldn't have put that in. You, why did you do that? Why? Because people need to see the truth. Everyone needs to see the truth of what's going on out there. And no one's telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You don't believe me? Why is the next movie? I can't. I'm wait. going to be pushing that movie out summer. I put a movie out on January 1st of this year, Fatter Documentary 2. That's Before right. the last day of this year, 2021, I will have another documentary out there. I am not bullshitting. If you don't think when you go, what, what does Vinny do all day long? What does he do? What does he do? I, I'm out there making movies. I, I don't think anybody's <clears throat> sitting there going, what does he do all day long? Uh, my, my friend Adam Carolla. It's pretty obvious what you're doing for all day long. My friend Adam Carolla has a whole warehouse, Anna. He's got Nate. He's got two offices next to Nate with people in them with editing booths. He's got someone, he's got uh, Megan, my, my assistant works over there under that roof. He's got probably six. I know, people, I want to steal her people. away from both of you. You can't. Megan's the best. I, must I, pay her. I, I actually pay her. You, you want me to tell you why I pay Megan? Why you pay her? Yeah. I would assume you pay her. I, I do. I'm going to tell you why Good. I pay her. Okay. Here's Megan's job. Megan doesn't even know this. Serena goes, you got too much. You got too much going on. You need an assistant. So one summer I had an assistant, but then Megan had to go back. She used to teach school, mm -hmm. had to go back to teach school. And I said, Megan, you going back to work? She goes, yeah. I said, um, can I keep paying you to be my assistant? And she was like, you mean like work remotely? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Work remotely, whatever. Just I pay her. So when Serena goes, you need an assistant. I, go, I got Megan. Because I like to work alone. I like to work. So Megan gets paid. So. I can tell Serena, I got Megan. Every now and then she sends an well, so email. They, what you're telling me is that Megan has more free time so that she can work for me. Well, she works for Corolla. She's got another full-time job at Corolla. I'm going to take her away. Yeah, Corolla, she's good work. She's a good work. I know, work. she's amazing. Yeah, she gets shit done. But look, I, I'm kidding. Megan does stuff for me. I, I, I give her stuff to do. Once a month, I make her do something. Um, but her here's the thing. Corolla's got people over there. And four or five people editing. Right, it right. takes them years to get a documentary out. Oh, I, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. I, you're yeah. talking about the timeline. I know how complicated it is. It's crazy. And I have a timeline for a four to six minute cooking video. And I'm like, my head's exploding. I'm like, I can't do this. Anna, I do it. You, I, you know how back in the day I was a, um, uh, an ultra cyclist and people go, wait, you had a full time job and you ultra. You, you, yeah. How did you do it? I would come in at 10 o'clock at night and get on the spinner. The spinner's right there. Mm -hmm. I, I have a spinner. I'm pointing. I, when my hand is out like this, about three feet away from my spinner, it's right on the other side of my. Um, can you guys see that stuff in a mirror? Can you see my sort of. Yeah. I see All the right. TV. Yeah. Well, it, the spinner faces the TV. I would get on that bike. I get home at 10 o'clock from training my last client. I get on that bike until midnight. And literally just towel off, wake up at 4.15, take a shower, and then go to my first client by 6 o'clock. And that's how I became an ultracyclist. When I say I'm going to do a movie every year, 
Now, I don't know about next year, but this year I'm putting out two. I'm putting out two movies because. Good. You can't it, look, folks, there's a lot of information is coming at me fast. And the only thing I could do is tell it in a story. And the story I tell is in a movie. It's the way I do it. And, if they, and look, you go, Jesus Christ, well, you got all the time in the world. No, I have a vitamin company, a coffee company, NSNG Foods, where the ultra fat is and the whole thing. And all of those things take time every day. Doing five podcasts every week, every week in and week out takes time. And then there's Twitter every day, twice a day I'm on Twitter. It makes for a full life. If that's not me trying to do something, I don't know what is. And well, I just, the only thing that gives me the energy to continue is that every now and then I turn on Twitter and someone goes, look at me, I lost 200 pounds. A guy up in, in uh, what's his name? Ken something. Anna, did you see that one today? Mm -hmm. I will it. say people put doing their testimonials, saying they lost weight, saying they're getting healthy, saying they're enjoying the food, saying they're enjoying the products. That honestly is what keeps us going. We're very easy. We are motivated. Our love language is uh, tweets, nice tweets about your results. <laughs> Guys, go, go to my Twitter and look up um, Ken Armstrong. Uh, he's a husband, a cyclist, a walker, 210 pounds lost. He intermittent I mean, fast. Insane. He's low carb. He's keto, uh, low C, H, F, N, S, N, G. Uh, I fatten easily is what he says here. He's a business analyst from Essex. That's in uh, that's in in the UK. Uh, he lives in uh, Kilorglen. So um, he's in Ireland. Anyway, guy lost over 200 pounds. Amazing. 200 pounds. He does not look like the same human being. No. He lost a whole human being. He did. How did he look like the same human being. I, I'm looking at it on Twitter and he's thanking me and he's thanking uh, Brian Lenski. He's thanking everybody. Great. He's, he's, he's going to be thank you. And you know what? Don't thank me. Don't thank me at all. I'm happy for you, brother. And I'm happy for anyone who does this. Anyone who decides to do it every day and not do a cheat day is someone I'm interested in. I'm interested. And by the way, I don't care how many times you fuck up. If you got to start over every day, I'm with you. I'm right there. I'll hold your hand. I'll do whatever it takes. Doesn't matter. Because what else am I doing? I got nothing on my plate. Well, Bryant Manning, our friend Bryant Manning, Fit, Fit Evolution, wants to know, would you eat quinoa on video for charity? <clears throat> Depends on the charity. Oh, so you're telling me there's a chance. I would eat quinoa um, if it's a charity, I believe in, yes. If it's going to help people, like if it's... um. If it's going to a charity that I give to, yeah, um, that that I, I would do it for that because there's a few charities um, I I like to give to. Children's Hospital is one of them, folks. Yeah. It's easy. I do like that. children's charities myself. Um, because uh, yeah, I I can't stand it. That and watching that Sarah McLaughlin uh, on oh McLaughlin. the dog abuse. Oh one. my god! Oh, I can't I can't watch. It hurts what? me. It hurts my. It, if I have a soul, it's hurt. <laughs> you have a soul. Oh, um, I have. I, I can't. Time the kids for one with more. the towel on their heads with the cancer. I can't stand. I know. It. It's awful. I send all my money to here. Hey, just go. Take it. Take it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Jesus Christ. Um, right. We have time for one more question, and then yeah. we're going to talk about Villa Capelli. I would eat. Close. I would eat fruity pebbles for a charity. Okay. What about fruity pebbles made from quinoa? I would eat that. Because you know that there's some organic, and I'm using air quotes, thing at, at Whole Foods. It's like quinoa fru fruity pebbles. I would eat a complete vegan diet for a month if it for made charity? enough money for a charity. I would give up a beloved steak and eggs and bake. Oh, bake. I don't know. I don't know if you should say oh, a month. For a month? <laughs> A month is a long and time. It would I, did, have, I did carnivore for 28 days and I love meat. And I was like, oh, oh I need something I would, else. I would have to at least earn 100000 for the charity to, yeah. to make a kind of sacrifice because, I mean, I would have to ingest a lot more B12 and take all kinds of supplements to make myself well, healthy. Well, good thing you run a vitamin company and you can get that B12. Yeah, I, I could just get the B12. I, I got that. But um, I thought about today how many of your products that I ingest during the day 
I had the coffee first thing in the morning. I had a nut butter at some point. I have vitamin D. I have magne- I'll have magnesium before I go to bed tonight. I had coffee again right before we did this thing. So I'm already up to uh, five Vinny products. I had a double, one day. A double espresso made with my honey process. You can still see the foam in there. You decafs for my you see the foam in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, oh, that's right. Did you get it yet? I'm getting it. I'm getting it like today. I got to order it. Um, we have time for one more question. Oh, I do want to sure. give the sauce update for the Monday show today. As we're recording this, we always record a few days before. Today. Putanesca and pink crema. Eat happy kitchen sauces. Are being um, can, can, I, can I pre-order tonight? And tomorrow. Can I pre-order? You cannot pre-order just oh. yet because we don't. The website's not up and running. My web run guy went to the I hospital. All right, Anna, listen. Hmm. I don't want you to give me any for free. But can you hold me to you know, like a, 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 a case of each? Yeah. A case of each. I want a yeah. case. Yeah. Can, can you please? And next, next week when I have it, because I'm going to have them send me some, I'll make something fun with the Putanesco or the pink crema on camp. Well, when we tape, I'll make something fun. Wait, wait, Anna, I have a different. Don't hold it for Can you? When will it open? Do you know? When will, will it be open at midnight before this comes out? Because no, it, no, out. there's no way we'll have the website ready. Because what we have to do is we're manufacturing. Because last time I pre-sold, Mm -hmm. And it was, and then it, we got delayed and I didn't want that to happen this time. So we're manufacturing, putting them in the Shopify system after we weigh and measure everything. And then boom, it'll be ready for sale. Can you send me a text when it's ready for sale? Yeah, so I can get I it will. right away. And well, here's the thing. I told you about the jars, right? We yeah. were supposed to make 3000 of each flavor, which wasn't going to last that long anyway, but that's all the jars we could get. Just found out we can only make 1500 of each flavor. There are no jars. Oh. Folks, um, get, get it fast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be around uh, really quickly. But I don't worry if you're on my email or in the Facebook group or whatever. I'm not hard to find. Come, send it uh, to me before you send I'll out your email. Okay, I will. I'll make sure I That's say it. That's all I ask. Yeah, Anna, don't, don't send me for free. I hate when you send me for free. You, you, you barely make any money on this. You, you give it for me for me. That's your profit. I will, you know, the idea is that we'll get, we'll scale up in the next couple of years and then eventually make a profit. But right now you're right. We don't make profit, yeah. but that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to sense up. Okay. So let's ask this last question and then we'll talk about Villa Capelli and then we'll go. Cause I got to do NBC in 20 minutes. Here's the deal. Jay Hemphill asks read these hashtag NSNG on the go question mark. I travel for work and simply can't eat another lunch out of a grocery store deli case. Yeah, that sounds trash. Well, for one, yeah. you could get sounds yourself trash. some ultra fat, but you're not going to want to eat ultra fat every day. You can make at home. You can get it. I literally eat it every day. <laughs> Me too. I eat ultra fat every day. Uh, look, I, after I did my, my leg workout, it's still like you can see the squat bar is still set up. Um, I had two of them before I had this coffee to sit down. I had to do Corolla and then this. So I've been here for a couple of hours just sitting here and I've been living off of the ultra fat. But folks, you're going to need more than ultra fat. Yeah. Get yourself, if that's your case and that's the way you work, get yourself a dehydrator. It's, they're cheap and it's cheaper to make jerky yourself. You can use your favorite cuts of meat, any, anything from venison to uh, beef to pork, whatever you want to make with, you know, it's, it's great. <clears throat> and you can sauce it, you can spice it up the way you like with the black pepper and salt, whatever. You can make a perfect jerky and just get yourself some Ziploc bags. You bring that along. Uh, if you find yourself in a deli section of a, uh, of a store, get the fresh cut, you know, roast beef or ham or, you know, uh, uh, you have corned beef. Salami. Kind of salami. Get you some of that. Olives are always a good choice if, if they have the olive bar. Um, Basically make the avocado. good part of a charcuterie board. Yeah. Yeah. Without, without the bread or the crackers. Or James. Uh, so, yeah, th those kind of things, are, you know, you can find good yogurt on the run. You can put heavy cream in your coffee, you know, even on a crappy place like Starbucks. You can I will that. say coffee is a great trick to tide you over if you're if you know that you're not going to be able to get to a meal for a couple of hours. Um, I, I think I see a lot of people in the group who travel for work and they just know that they have to bring their cooler with them. Yeah. And they know that when they book hotels, they have to book a hotel that has a refrigerator in it. And uh I will batch make bacon and bring that with me if I have to go to somewhere for the entire day. And uh, I always book a hotel with a refrigerator in it and I go to whatever the local store is and 
grab that stuff. You can, if you have access to a cooler too, you can bring hard boiled eggs. You can bring some cheeses. You can bring those, you can bring stuff with you if you yeah. have the cooler and make, here's what I like to do too. If you make a ribeye or a New York the night before and you eat some of it, uh, so I like to thinly slice the rest of it and put it in a Ziploc bag, but I like cold meats. See, I don't, but you know, we, we do that here. You know, I'll, you know, we'll, we always have too much meat at night. So we'll slice always. it. I, I like to make it about, about a little more than a quarter, about a half. Mm -hmm. an and then mm -hmm. the next morning, uh, what I'll do is steak and eggs. I'll put yep. butter in the pan. Absolutely. And it's still kind of cool. I just hit the outside both ways real quickly, pull it off, crack a few eggs in there. I'm rocking yep. and rolling. Anna, let's do the ad for Villa Capelli. And then I want to tell you about the show. I'm going to finish watching it right after this show is over with. I uh, can't wait to go finish the series. Uh, I have one show left. Oh, um, and okay. I'll tell you about it after I tell you guys about Villa Capelli, the longest running sponsor on the show. Villa Capelli, folks, Paul Capelli was quite the man. And his husband, Stephen Crutchfield, is still quite the man who's kept that country, that country, the country and the company running. Kept that country. Well, listen, somebody needs to keep Italy running so we can keep getting this olive oil from Villa Capelli. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I went to a place. Um, a, a new winery in town a couple weeks ago, and they had done like a small batch of their olive oil or whatever. And I, I bought one because I buy things. I buy oil and vinegar and salts everywhere I go because uh, I like trying local things. And the lady was like, which, by the way, it's a local California olive oil. Right. It costs twice the price of Villa Capelli. It's local. crazy. It's crazy. Local. OK. And the lady goes, oh, it's a finishing oil. And I was like, yeah, I know about that. I know what a finishing oil is. I love it when people try to explain me about olive oil. I'm like, I got it. I'm good. They try to douche explain you. They do explain me for sure. Yeah, it's they, a they all explain oil. me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. there's only one man who can mansplain me on olive oil and he died. So yeah, nobody else can do that. No, they're douche explaining you. Uh, they're douche explaining me. Finishing but, I, but there's a lot of olive oil being made where I live because it's very similar climate to Italy and a lot of wine grows. Can here you imagine you get a rub and tug girl and, you know, she's like jerking you with one oil. And then uh, at the end, she goes, wait, let me pour the finishing oil on your car. <laughs> we don't we don't waste the expensive oil on your yeah. Uggs. Yeah. And we wait to the, the end when you're about to come yeah. and you get the finishing oil. You get the finishing oil. Yeah. But I, I was like. Of course, I mean, it goes without saying I tasted it and I was like, it's fine. Yeah, it's not Villa Capelli and it's twice the price. And I'm like, no wonder people are confused about olive oil. And I hope that they stay a sponsor because I don't know, we'll probably still promote them even when they decide not to be sponsors. No, anymore we did it before they was. <laughs> I know we did, but it's just such high quality oil. Yes, it's more expensive than your grocery store olive oil, but it's not freaking finishing oil and don't treat it as such. I did that for a while. I treated it as like I would only put it in salads and stuff. And then yeah, I finally yeah. started uh, cooking everything with it. And tonight I'm going to make my uh, cauliflower. Fried rice, you know, that right. thing. And then, and then some saute some bok choy. I do everything in the Villa Capelli. It's great. And if you want to get your hands on some, they still he still has some of the 750 milliliter tins. I still can't believe 750 milliliters is not, it's not a tin, half the right? price it's, of this other one. No, it's a bottle. Sorry. Bottle. The three liter tins are still sold out. You can get this 750 milliliter bottle and you should order several of them. Qualify for the hundred dollars. So you get the free shipping. Actually, go up, go up higher than that. Make sure you get your hands on the uh, the uh, what's it called? Some of those little spices, the almond flour. Get to get a little bundle for yourself. Yeah. And use yeah. the promo code Vinny, V I N N I E, not with the whippy Y. And you'll get 10% off your order. This is very important that you guys do this. I promise you, it, it, everybody who posts pictures and everybody who talks to Vinny in the consults and everybody posts in my group, in the Eat Happy group, they're like, oh my God, it's actually really good. I'm like, I know. They think, you know, it's like, oh, they're shelling. No, I'm telling you, folks, do yourself a favor. If you haven't done it before, go do it. And if you um, want to use it as a finishing oil, if you happen to work in a massage parlor and that's yeah. your job, maybe ask your boss to spring for some Villa Capelli and didn't, and then they'll get a little pull you pinch right at the end. <sighs> nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to masturbate with that stuff and see what happens. Yeah. I know. I know what'll happen. <laughs> we know how that one ends. Yeah. Lick him up. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, mercy. Promo code Vinny at Villa Capelli, 10% off. Anna, have you seen Mayor of East Town? Oh, no, but somebody just texted me about that today. Watch it. Make it your next one. <laughs> I'm watching it in two nights. I watched half of it last night. It's seven episodes. I have one episode okay. left. Okay. Everyone says it's great. Yeah, it, it really is. It's uh, Kate Winslet. And uh, she's uh, really good in it. And uh, just go watch it. It's good. Mayor of East Town. All right, folks. Um, <clears throat> we've done it, right, Anna? Yeah. You know what to do. Anna's got some new sauce coming out today. Once I get mine, I don't care. You guys get whatever you want. So <laughs> I will get mine, and then everyone else can get there. So go check it out at eathappykitchen.com. Also, if you're sitting there with a bunch of sauce going, what do I do? Go get Eat Happy 1, well, Eat Happy, the cookbook, and then Eat Happy 2. Get them both. Then you'll know what to do with the sauce that just showed up. Yeah. So those are th two things you could do right there. And there's more. Well, and you I have a PDF of marinara recipes that will, when you buy those sauces, the PDF of 40 marinara recipes will be up on the site as well. You can get that. I think it's like three or four bucks. The site is called anavacino.com, right? Or eathappykitchen.com. Eat eathappykitchen.com. Eat right? mm -hmm. Go there. Uh, folks, before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytartarace.com, click through the banner. Bookmark it, use it every time. It puts coal on the fire, it gets my train down the track. Uh, they do not pay us the way they used to, not even close. So since you're at vinnytartaries.com, if you're so inclined to help this podcast continue, as you know, I don't take a salary from this. It, the money that comes in pays to keep the podcast running. So it doesn't have, I, I hate it when it comes out of my pocket. I uh, put a lot of time into this and it uh, costs a lot of money to keep it running. And I appreciate when you guys do the donations over at uh, Superfan page at Vinny Totter. It's really Center. nice. Thank you guys yes. for doing that. Thank you guys. And uh, on behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Totterich. Put life into living and do it with enthusiasm. <laughs>